Adelaide University recently ran a film competition and discovered that it was not only filmmakers who entered. With so much digital video content being produced, where can serious filmmakers gain recognition and further their careers? Film festivals are really important to the careers of filmmakers, uh, particularly when you're working um, uh, in a genre such as I have been. When, um, I've been working with Rolf here for 10 years and his films lean more towards an art house audience. And so we always tried to launch those films at European film festivals, particularly, and in this order, Cannes, Berlin and Venice. What a festival does uh, in the context of any art form is really find, um, provide a, a point of reference for audiences, a kind of entry point, if you like, into a whole range of um, artistic practice that they might not normally engage with. Uh, we certainly find that in the Adelaide Festival of Arts where audiences that might normally be seen as quite conservative in Adelaide in the context of an Adelaide Festival go and see some of the most cutting edge practice from art forms from all over the world. And certainly that's the case within a film festival that you're able to show things that would never work normally in the, in the commercial cinemas. I think the truth is, is that be, what, what the film festival is doing is perhaps investing in riskier propositions rather than ones that uh, you know more likely to get a commercial return it's so the film festival has showed that it's what is prepared to be edgy riskier uh, and getting involved in new technologies and um, uh, but 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 the fantastic thing is it's taken real risks but those risks have paid dividends with for instance you know 10 canoes becoming a world hit uh, and critically regarded in film festivals around the world and would look both ways uh, the same. And I, I reckon Boxing Day and Forbidden Lies are going to have a, you know, a, a similar reaction. Refracting Adelaide. It's a cool July morning. The bus stops me off at the East End. I walk through Runnell Street. I see culture, good food and wine. Cinema and art, suits and boots, and some hidden treasures. This is South Street. There's a park up one end, a park up the other, and lots of interesting houses in between. This side house. We built it five months ago and have been living in it since. It also has a great view of the street. Let me show you. See, I told you it had a good view of the street. Maybe it was the first time I saw him. His big blue eyes, messy brown hair and goofy smile. Or maybe it was that first kiss. So soft, his upper lip barely touching my lower lip. So I want to go back to how it was before. In the heart of South Africa, two men have devoted their lives to protecting others. Fearless, strong, and brave, they are undertaking a mission like no other. This mission may cost them their lives, and yet they hesitate not. For, for emerging filmmakers, uh, film festivals such as Tropfest can be really good because um, if you've made a film um, on video, you need to, and you can't get it released theatrically, obviously, um, it's really good to have it tested in some sort of marketplace. And festivals such as Tropfest um, can be good because it can profile new filmmakers and give them an opportunity to kickstart their careers. Well, for a lot of filmmakers it's really, really important because it's very, very hard to get your film seen by a broad audience. Um, there's um, some amazing films floating around that are, won't be picked up by cinemas at all. So film festivals allow filmmakers to uh, screen their films and find an audience and then through film festivals um, perhaps get um, broader attention on their films as well. 
it, it provides a context where audiences are prepared to take a risk and um, give it a go and uh, therefore I suppose provide a really important platform for emerging audience, emerging filmmakers to you know, try their practice out. The way we watch films is also undergoing a technical revolution. Cinemas and film festivals have to come to terms with the new methods of delivery and content on formats other than traditional film. What we see with digital technology is simply that more films are being made to be um, put into film festivals. Uh, and of course we now have online events um, which completely change format and style. Uh, well, digital technology has really opened up uh, the sources of films that we can access and screen. Uh, for a long time we've been limited by uh, film prints, uh, digital platforms or digital technology allows us to um, get access to a, a lot more movies to, uh, to show in our cinema. I mean if you want to show the interesting work that's happening around the world you have to be prepared to screen off, you know, I suppose we screen off about eight or nine different formats which range from different kinds of 35 millimeter film, um, six, super 16 film, down to um, screenings on mobile phones, handsets, and we have to bring in digital projection into every cinema that we screen in and have the ability to screen off um, multiple sources of, of tape or, or digital tape. It's moving towards really films being screened um, straight from digital hard drive. Uh, which means they can be transported uh, a lot more easily, a lot more quickly, and hopefully uh, it will allow people to distribute their films uh, in a much uh, cheaper and broader fashion as well. And whenever you screen a film at the moment when you go to the cinema, that print that you're watching is worth about three to five thousand dollars. So you can imagine when, you know, the big Hollywood studios, for example, are rolling out, you know, the next Titanic. They are spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars simply making film prints. Now you'll be able to do it all off a digital tape. And in fact, you'll be able to broadcast it out through satellite. I mean, there's all sorts of possibilities. So what it means for the independent and emerging sector is they're going to be able to distribute their own films much more cheaply, much more flexibly. Hopefully, distributors will have a kind of more open mind about the kind of risks that they're going to take because they're not spending all that money up front cutting expensive film prints in which to screen. So it really is going to change the nature of distribution and hopefully open things up a lot more for the audience and for the filmmakers. Because we're releasing the film self-distribution, we never had, had the necessity to blow up 35 million. Cost-wise, it's 50 to $100,000, so that's the other reason why we didn't do it. So I think, as with all revolutions, um, there are likely to be people who welcome that revolution coming and others who feel slightly worried about it, especially those people who have been trained to look for high quality product in their own work and in others' works as well. So I'm very excited about the possibilities that we have and I'm really pleased that in South Australia we're leading the charge. Digital videotape, DVD, hard disk recorders, non-linear editing systems, these are just some of the filmmaking tools of today. While quality increases and falling costs make that technology more accessible, professional and amateur filmmakers alike will only continue to embrace the revolution.